So this is a long-term project focused on beach nourishment, primarily in Pea Island. The interesting thing about Pea Island, it is a national wildlife refuge, and so it's fairly protected. In 2014, the state of North Carolina, particularly DOT, completed a beach nourishment project to help protect NC-12. Since then, again, it's in a national wildlife refuge, so there hasn't been a whole lot of man-made, human-made impacts to that same location, to that same beach. So we can look at the implications, the influence of beach nourishment long-term since 2014 to really understand some of those long-term impacts associated with adding sand to the beach. So the study that we're doing here at the Coastal Studies Institute is really focused on the long-term implications, the long-term impacts of nourishment. Most studies that look at impacts of beach nourishment study it sort of right before the nourishment takes place and maybe a couple months after, or maybe a year or two after the nourishment project itself. Well, some of these processes take sometimes years to really demonstrate any implications, any changes that have taken place. And so because we have this opportunity at the Pea Island National Wildlife Refuge where there hasn't been another nourishment that's taken place, we have this opportunity to study that nourishment project over the course of seven years. So we're looking at the sediment character, the sands themselves. We're looking at the morphology of the beach, the shape of the beach, that profile. We're looking at the invertebrates, the little critters that live inside the sand. Because those critters, the ecology of the beach, are critical to shorebirds, turtles, things that feed on those invertebrates in the sand. And so although we're looking at these smaller things like the sediment character, the actual invertebrates, the implications of that move well up the food chain. And so with an understanding of these long-term implications of nourishment, we'll get a better understanding and be able to answer those questions of the influence that that project had on the ecology, on the morphology of the beach long-term, and then be able to apply that to other projects. Every quarter, this is a quarterly survey, and it's been going on between us, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the North Carolina Department of Transportation since 2012. And what we do is we go out and we collect biological samples, sampling invertebrates in the swash zone, and invertebrates up on the upper beach area to track abundances, shifts in distribution and populations, etc. We also collect geological data and sand samples in the swash and in the upper beach. We collect information on sediment compaction. Yet we use GPS systems that are very precise in terms of location in the X, Y, and the Z, so the height. In fact, our, the elevations can be accurate up to one centimeter and sometimes even less than that. So we collect elevations along the beach, what we call a cross shore that's going from the shoreline up to the dune and it gives us what we, what's called a shoreline profile. What we do is we bring the sediment materials back to the lab, we clean them up and dry them, and then we go through a process called mechanical sieving. Mechanical sieving essentially separates the grains of sand into different size classes and we use that information to tell us what's going on on the beach. Uh, we can tell how much wave energy is out there and how much changes in the tide. And it gives us some idea then of how that might be affecting the ecological systems, the biology. The impacts associated with the, a, lot, a lot of the animals that are on the beach because they depend heavily in terms of their ability to, to feed, their ability to move around on the beach based on di the distribution and size classes of, of the sediments out there. So the sediment analysis that we do is very important in that regard. What we found is that the sand that was used was a really good match for Pea Island. Previous studies that have worked on short-term impacts of beach nourishment, you know, over months and years, that have studied places that didn't have a good match showed widespread mortality of invertebrates. And you know, our study showed that, yeah, right away, like within a couple weeks following the nourishment of Pea Island, we had some mortality, but it came back really fast. That's why we think it's important to think about that and really try to match the sands as best as possible. 
Again, previous work in, 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 in other areas that had bad match in materials showed mortality. I mean, widespread mortality, and it changed the ecology of the beach. So this partnership with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has really allowed us to study this process that we probably couldn't have done elsewhere. It's, it's like a laboratory on the beach itself because it is protected, because we have such a good partnership with Fish and Wildlife Service. And so that's been really helpful and, and unique to this particular project.